forest, cocoa, share nuts, gold, diamonds, manganese, bauxite, iron ore, copper, silver, salt, limestone, lithium, crude oil. These are all natural resources found in Ghana, a relatively small West African country with a population of about 31 million. Some of these natural resources have been extracted from the region currently called Ghana for eons. Yet, the country has so far not reaped the full benefits of these resources as the majority of them are exported in their raw state without any value addition. Exporting natural resources without value addition is disadvantageous in a number of ways. First, Ghana is unable to generate enough foreign exchange through export. Second, in failing to invest in and industrialize Ghana's natural resources sector, the country loses out on millions of jobs that would have been created in the value chain. Instead, these jobs are indirectly exported abroad. Third, the lack of investment in Ghana's extractive industry has made it possible for multinationals to dominate the industry. Sadly, Ghana's Minerals and Mining Act leaves much to be desired. Ghana operates a tax royalty fiscal system where the primary way government generates revenue from mining is through corporate income taxes and royalties levied on revenue generated from production. The Minerals and Mining Amendment Act 794 puts the royalty rate application at 5% of gross revenue of minerals. However, select companies have signed updated mineral development agreements which institute a royalty rate that varies between 3 and 5% depending on the price of the mineral. This means that a chunk of revenue made for mining in the country goes to these multinational companies who keep their dollar earnings in offshore accounts. Given the obvious mismanagement and waste of Ghana's natural resources over all these years, the citizens of Ghana have sadly had to endure immense economic challenges in the midst of such abundant blessings. Realizing the mistakes of yesteryear, the government has embarked on industrialization to rectify this. The Royal Ghana Gold Refinery is a gold refinery located on the premises of the Precious Minerals Marketing Company. Its construction began in 2019 as a joint partnership between the government of Ghana and Rosie Royal Limited, an Indian company. The refinery, which was constructed at a cost of 25 million US dollars, has the capacity to refine 300 to 500 kilograms of gold daily through chemical and electrical methods. As of June this year, the refinery had undergone a test run and was expected to start full operation in August. Also, in 2018, the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation was established by an Act of Parliament, the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation Act 2018, Act 976. Its mandate is to develop and promote a globally competitive integrated aluminium industry in Ghana. The corporation aims to achieve this through the execution of four key projects. Project 1 involves expansion of the existing mine at Awaso and building of a refinery. Project 2 entails the development of a mine at Nyinehin in Pasaso and a refinery solution. Project 3 involves development of a mine at Chebi, a second mine at Nyinehin in Pasaso and building of a refinery. Project 4 entails the modernization and expansion of a Valco smelter to improve efficiency and increase capacity. In September 2021, Ghana's President Nane Akufuado launched all four projects and witnessed a signing ceremony between the corporation and its strategic partner, Rockshore International, to execute Project 2, which is the development of a mine at Nyinehin in Pasaso and a refinery solution. This will be done at an estimated cost of $1.2 billion. The mine, which is expected to be developed in two years' time, is projected to yield 5 million tons of bauxite per annum and create more than 1,000 jobs. The refinery is also expected to be completed within two years. So far, Rockshore International has commenced prospecting activities on site. Apart from these, Government's One District, One Factory initiative also aims at promoting industrialization in Ghana.
The goal of this initiative is to change the nature of Ghana's economy from one which is dependent on import and export of raw materials to one which is focused on manufacturing, value addition and export of processed goods. Last year, the Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry, Michael Ochebefi, announced that government had completed a total of 106 out of 278 factories under the One District One Factory Initiative. The first of these to have been completed was the Akumfi Fruits and Juice Factory, which commenced production in 2019. The factory, which is the biggest pineapple juice processing factory in West Africa, has the capacity to produce about 10 tons of fruits per hour. Others include Amentin Agro Processing Company Limited, which is recognized as one of the most modernized and fully automated industrial starch factories in West Africa. The company cultivates 14,000 acres of farmland and supports thousands of farmers to cultivate over 40,000 acres of farmland. Premium Foods Limited is an agro-processing company located in Jache Pramso in Kumase. Rider Iron and Steel is a steel's production company located in Kumase. Both were constructed under the One District One Factory Initiative. Apart from government, some local and international companies are also contributing their quota to Ghana's industrialization agenda. Therefore, some companies in the cocoa processing sector have also begun to make investments in Ghana's cocoa sector in order to increase value addition. In May 2022, Qua Impact, a Swiss Ghanaian company, obtained a $3.5 million investment to build a new cocoa processing facility in the country. Meanwhile, Cargill completed a $13 million expansion of its cocoa processing plant in Tema in 2021, thereby increasing its production capacity to 90,000 tons annually. Also, Afrotropic Cocoa Processing, a Ghanaian company, commissioned a new cocoa processing factory in 2019, valued at $30 million. The factory has the capacity to produce 15,000 tons of cocoa beans. The petroleum industry has not been left out of the industrialization agenda. A 3 billion oil refinery is being constructed in Tema by the Centio Group of Companies. The facility, which has a capacity of 100,000 barrels per stream day, BSD, is expected to increase local refinery capacity by 60,000 BSD from the 40,000 BSD produced by the state-owned Tema oil refinery. While the first phase of the facility is expected to refine 40,000 BSD into various petroleum products, the second phase is projected to increase production capacity by 60,000 BSD, bringing the plant's total capacity to 100,000 and annual production to 5 million tons in line with Ghana's annual consumption demands. The refinery is expected to start operations in January of next year and is projected to hire over a thousand employees. These are all steps in the right direction towards changing the fortunes of Ghana, but definitely there is still more room for improvement.